Hello friends, now I will be talking to you about peptic ulcer. When we talk about peptic ulcer, we know there are two things to talk about. One is the duodenal ulcer and other is the gastric ulcer. Duodenal ulcer is much more common than the gastric ulcer. Regarding the duodenal ulcer, they are always benign. And the most common site is first part of the duodenum. But in contrast, gastric ulcer, they are benign. But in 1 to 2 percent cases, they may be malignant also. Okay. Now, what are the risk factors for a case of peptic ulcer? There are risk factors which either can lead to peptic ulcer or which may hamper the healing. The risk factors are H. pylori infection is one of the most common causes of peptic ulcer. Drugs like NSAIDs, corticosteroids or corticosteroid. Zoringer Ellison syndrome because of high amount of gastrin which lead to high amount of acid. Smoking and alcohol, they are the one which really hamper the healing of the ulceration. Then endocrine condition like Cushing syndrome and hyperparathyroid, they also lead to peptic ulceration including polycythemia vera and cirrhosis of liver. In these patients also they have more chance of having peptic ulcers. Now, what are the clinical features? Clinical features as far as duodenal ulcer are concerned. The classical feature is late night hunger pain. Typically pain occurs at midnight when patient is sleeping after 3, 4, 5 hours of taking meals. Because when the, whenever the stomach is empty, patient has pain, so called hunger pain. So, patient has pain abdomen, he will get up at night, eat something. Food relieves the pain, food relieves the pain. Hence, Weight loss is not a feature, rather you can say weight gain is a feature, weight loss is not a feature. And since we will diagnose by endoscopy and it is a benign ulcer, so biopsy is not needed, biopsy not needed. But in contrast, in gastric ulceration, food increases the pain. That is why patient is always scared of eating food. And since patient does not eat food, weight loss occur. Just to remind you, in duodenal it was weight gain was a feature. And whenever we are getting a gastric ulcer, we do diagnose by endoscopy. Biopsy is always needed, must the reason being I told you 1 to 2 percent are malign, can be malignant. And even after therapy also, <coughs> repeat endoscopy is mandatory. 
repeat endoscopy is mandatory in gastric ulceration. Repeat endoscopy is not essential in duodenal ulceration. So, this was the clinical features. In addition to this, patient can have GI bleed. Patient may just come with melina or hematemesis also or patient may have other complication which I am going to discuss later on. The patient may manifest as a complication of peptic ulceration also. So, now let us see patient has come with a typical symptom of, of uh, duodenal ulcer or gastric ulcer or so called peptic ulcer. How are we going to diagnose this case? Diagnosis. Upper GI endoscopy is the most accurate and most confirmative test to diagnose a case of peptic ulcer. Well, then after that you like to go for, for H. pylori infection also, test for H. pylori. What test we do? First is serology. This can be done very easily, conveniently taking a blood sample. But the drawback is it cannot differentiate between acute and chronic because it is positive in both acute and chronic cases. So, that is a drawback. Second test is endoscopy biopsy. Once we have done the endoscopy, we take a biopsy piece and you make a slide and you look for a H. pylori in bacteria in the slide. This is the most accurate test, most confirmatory test. And third is the H. pylori antigen in stool. It is positive only in acute infection. Then urease breath test C3, 13, 14 again positive in acute test. But remember, if this is done, then we do not need to do this test. If this has been done, then other three are not required to be done. What else we can do? We can go for barium studies also, but it will simply detect the ulcer. But barium studies are the most valuable when there is gastric outlet obstruction is there. In fact, gastric outlet obstruction we suspect then uh, endoscopy is not uh, much of you this is a better test as compared to endoscopy. We need to check gastrin level only when we are suspecting Zoringer Allison syndrome. Now, let us see what are the complications. Complication of a case of peptic ulcer are as follows. First complication is GI bleed. Patient may come with melina or hematemesis. Second complication is gastric outlet obstruction. When do you suspect gastric outlet obstruction? Suppose there is one patient who come with, with a, who is a known case of peptic ulcer or even if he is not known, he come to you with vomiting and he says the vomitus contain food eaten a day before or food eaten many hours before, maybe 8 to 10 hours before. This is a diag almost a diagnostic history of gastric outlet obstruction. So, in that case I have told you, barium studies are better investigation than upper GI endoscopy because if you do endoscopy, the endoscope will not cross the obstruction. So, you like to go for endoscopy. Third is perforation perforation. If it perforate, it lead to severe pain abdomen and you examine the patient, the usually abdomen is distended 
and there is board like rigidity board like rigidity will be there and to confirm this you go for x ray abdomen in standing position so what we get what we get is classically gas under right side of diaphragm right side of diaphragm this is the diagnostic of any viscous perforation remember either gastric outlet obstruction is there or perforation patient you have to refer the case to surgeon this perforation is a emergency patient should be referred to surgeon immediately otherwise he will bleed to death in gastric outlet obstruction again surgeon has to be referred to patient needs surgery but it's not that it to be done immediately patient can we can wait for some time then of course the fourth complication is cancer gast and of course this is seen in gastric ulcer remember if you are have done endoscopy you are getting done a biopsy and you are getting ulcer as a malignancy again refer the case to surgeon so now we talk about treatment of a case of peptic ulcer we use triple therapy if patient is allergic to penicillin then we give proton pump inhibitor clarithromycin and metronidazole but if it's non allergic to penicillin then proton pump inhibitor clarithro like here but in metro we can replace with amoxicillin if the despite giving proper therapy ulcer doesn't heal the non healing the reason usually is poor compliance to treatment smoking alcohol and continue using ansaid okay and one more thing if patient need to be taken ansaid then we can use misoprostol misoprostol is a prophylactic drug it prevents the ulcer due to ansaid use this is all about peptic ulceration thank you very much.